At first of all, it was terribly formal. The man picked up the microphone and said, Hello, CQ, this is 2M, a talk little calling. And uh, we will now uh, play you a gramophone record entitled. The curious thing with a gramophone record was entitled. They're not called anything. And um, we just put on the gramophone record and then it was switched off. And then we had to wait three minutes to listen, if, uh, to listen out to find if we were interfering with legitimate services. Well, we were illegitimate, obviously, in those days. And, um, well, we listened out, and we weren't interfering, and we went on. And then one day, I, I never took part in these programs originally, but one day it seemed to me to be rather fun to pick up the microphone. We went to the local, and we had some dinner, and um, I, I started to broadcast, and we didn't wait three minutes. And we went on, and um, we talked, and at least I talked, and we sang, and we played the fool, and so on. And I think that was the first broadcasting ever in Britain. Mark you, we weren't an, uh, simply and only um, interested in um, broadcasting this frivolous stuff that you might think that we did. We had serious artists. For instance, we had Melchior. Melchior came to sing. I shall never forget Melchior coming. He brought an extraordinarily pretty accompanist. And um, with an air of intense originality, every member of the staff took this uh, company by the hand to show her our goat. We had a goat in the field next door, which was earthed. It had a peg in the ground and a chain attached to it, and it, it, it uh, circulated around this thing. But in the end, of course, the accompanist had to do her job, and she played the opening bars, and one held the microphone in front of the singer's face uh, at a suitable distance that one judged to be about right. Well, Melchior had just been married, apparently, and he'd left his wife comforted by a crystal set in Denmark, and he believed that the louder he uh, sang, the more likely his wife, uh, his new wife, was to hear him. And um, so when the opening bars were played, he um, took a, he, he gave a bellow, which shut the station, well, he gave a, he sucked in his breath, which pulled the windows shut, and he gave a bellow that shut the station down. And uh, I remember afterwards, he used to wander about the place and say, um, what's that? bust component there. Oh, well, of course, that's part of the Melchior breakdown. That is, uh, yes, because I think burst into flame. Well, uh, there was another case, I remember, an amusing incident in which um, some woman came to sing, and uh, she was all earnest, perhaps, and she sang Eruski lullabies. I told them not to make ir too Eruski, because remembering our audience, and um, she sang. Well, of course, I did a lot of imitations at the time. I pretended that we were receiving uh, programs from Italy, and I did an Italian tenor interrupted by Morse and oscillation and so on. And I did other imitations of basses, and oh, heaven knows how many. And, um, well, this woman sang, and they expected to get a lot of appreciative postcards. Unfortunately, they all turned up and said, now, that's the best imitation you've ever done. <laughs> <laughs>